Hello and thank you for watching. This is 101 on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. In this episode, we would be discussing insurance in Nigeria as we are one on one with a fellow Chartered Institute of Administrators, member Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, member Institute of Directors, and the Managing Director and Chief Executive at Anchor Insurance, Mr. Ebose Augustine Osega. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Mm. Ebose. Okay, so let's talk insurance. It appears. Um, we take many things for granted in this part of um, the world. I mean, especially insurance is one of them. Um, what would be your assessment of Nigeria's perception when it comes to insurance? Well, my perception um, about insurance in Nigeria is not different from our culture. Um, we, our attitude towards a lot of things that we, we, we seen as alien. You know, insurance is something you don't really see. A lot of people believe you don't see insurance. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know, to, want, wanting to understand the workability or how insurance is. Um, with the Nigerian attitude towards insurance is not believing in the things they don't see. You know, it's like somebody going to church who has never seen miracle. Most times don't believe. I want to see where the miracle is. But insurance actually is not supposed to be a miracle. Well, I think it's we like, have more people believing in miracles and churches than they do insurance. That's what anyway. I'm, that is what I'm saying. But a lot of people now, uh, this pandemic as it is, has actually created that awareness for, to see that, oh, people can actually earn from insurance. It's not as they don't know that, but also many factors will be responsible for people not being aware of insurance or not wanting to take insurance. One, there are many things that are responsible. A lot of people are aware that it's insurance, but they don't have the... The, the, the resources to do so. Mm -hmm. If you are not gainfully employed, you cannot be thinking about, talking about insurance, even if you have all your education, even if you have that awareness and the enlightenment to do it. But you don't have resources to do so, you are not gainfully employed. You cannot take insurance. If you do not have resources, for example, you are not into any businesses to have an insurable interest in each, for properties or equipment or things that you have, you will not, talk about, you will not think about insurance. Then the culture of awareness itself to say, oh, how does the workability of insurance in terms of awareness, creativity, and whatever. Then our culture as a people is that, oh, we are used to putting money in the bank. Even as it is in this country today, a lot of people, I heard a lot of people bury money in their soccer way and all that because they don't believe that if they put the money in the bank, it's as safe as if they keep it themselves. Mm -hmm. But they don't know that you can fix your money in the bank and you earn interest. Mm -hmm. Insurance is the same, same way. It's garbage in, garbage out. If you insure your car, for example, a car a policy is about... Uh, two million value that you bought the car. All you need to do is to pay 12.5% if in case of commercial vehicle, all right? That is what you have that you are insuring. In case of accident uh, eventuality, like accident or um, eventuality, what you have, the benefit you will have is that if there is, as the car is accidented or there's a loss or theft in that car, mm -hmm. you, have, you have your two million or you have your car back. You've used the phrase um, workability of insurance yes. twice now. I yes. want to explain that. But before you do that explanation, what are industry players doing to reduce the general um, lack of enthusiasm in Nigerians when it comes to insurance? What, is there any form of education ongoing? What exactly are industry players doing at the moment? Part of the education that, uh, that is bringing people close to insurance is what things that brought us. People like us when we were in school, we never heard about insurance we double into the system like an, like an accident. And we find ourselves, oh, this job is something that we could do. Creating awareness for a long time. I've been in this industry for about 20 years now. And we see a lot of young people coming in. If you come to Ankara, you find that we have a lot of very young, dynamic people who, who never heard about insurance, cut them young from NYC and all that. We are bringing them to create that awareness in them. The workability I'm talking about is our government creating a platform for legislation to say, look, insurance must be made composed like the BVN did in banking. These are some of the things everywhere we go, we say them. Like this awareness we're creating here, we're talking about insurance on TV, literature, journals, and all those things, jingle on radios, adverts on CNN, adverts on the TVs, like Plus Africa does. It's, it's part of the workability we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And being able to also create that awareness from the insurance part of it, pay claims when the need arises, is the workability we are talking about. Is this not magic? It is what you garbage, you garbage. Like, it's like data that you have, you are putting the computer. When you go back to ask for a computer, I need X, Y, Z information. It's given to you the way it is imputed. Mm, talking about making insurance um, compulsory to a certain degree, I think we've seen that when it comes to motor, um, 
um, insurance and all, and you have the third party insurance. Now, for the layman out there, and even myself, who would want to understand, what's the difference between the third party insurance and actually coming to a platform like yours or a company like yours to say, I want to insure my vehicle? What's the difference? There is no difference in because um, our system, for example, the motor insurance platform, mm -hmm. is on the internet. You can go, um, go to our website, click on it, and you see a motor vehicle. There are classes of um, policies under the motor vehicle. We have mm -hmm. the comprehensive, which has to do with the entire vehicle's um, insurance policy. Then we have the theft, and um, that one is not common in this country. But what is more common is comprehensive and third party. Mm -hmm. The third party is what is the minimum requirement, the minimum you could, that you be allowed. By, by regulators or by government, you must have, which is called a third party liability. Mm -hmm. In case um, you're driving a car and uh, you're accidented or you have a third party um, um, resolution in terms of accident and all that. So that, that safeguards and protect the other person who is driving the car, either opposite or beside or whatever. So what I'm saying here, the difference between those are the comprehensive takes care of all the generality of your insurance. The third party can only take care of the third party who, who you have um, who, have, who has an insurance policy with us that is affected by another insurance company. Mm. So that is the difference. Okay. But the, the truth is that once you have the comprehensive insurance, you don't care for the third party. But I, I will encourage Nigerians, it is better you have the comprehensive insurance policy, which, which, is, which of course will put you in a good stead in terms of your claims, um, um, uh, uh, payback time or excess back and all that. So that when you have that, it, it gives you more, more, confidence, uh, more confidence in terms of your policies um, awareness. Just like you going for a low facility, you have to have the gold class, the, the, the platinum class and all that. But you'll find out that the gold class definitely will have more uh, reward in terms of mm. uh, So you're talking time. about comprehensive um, insurance um, and all that. I mean, one of the issues, aside from the fact that some Nigerians don't even understand what insurance is, is the fact that some have embraced insurance but getting their claims um, wasn't a good experience or so you had an issue yes you insured your car and this insurance company wasn't there to be there for you when they're supposed to be there for you what is the situation with that and is there any form of regulation that can protect um, the citizens when they find themselves in that situation yeah the laws are there the laws are there the the, the laws were created the laws itself created insurance um it is, I will answer the question in two facets of it. The first, from the regulator angle, the rules are set that if you have a vehicle that you want to insure, the, the policy, the precedent, because the policy document that are issued to show to you most premium is paid. Premium paid is the amount of money that you paid on your car as a vehicle. If it is, that is 12.5%, if it's a case of comprehensive, for example, that is done. Then if there is accident, you need to also come back to tell the insurer that look, the car, the color of the car, the vehicle, the, 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 the number, the, the chassis number of those cars, information about that car must be known, uh, which is recorded. So at times of your claim that are accident, that same number, those same policies number, there will not be differential in them. If the color was black, it has to be black again. But if there's any need for you to change the color of your car before that time or change the engine, you must inform the insurer I have changed the engine of my car. This is not the new number of my engine car. This is not the color of this car. Then we will, we, we will upgrade our, our information. Update, sorry, I will update our information. Then that so is if the, there's discrepancies. If there's discrepancies, then, then, then we, yeah. yeah. But before then, there is what we call the post and pre-loss and post-loss uh, post survey. The pre-loss survey are the surveys, these are information required before the insurance commences. Then after the insurance that is a claim, reports or notification, it is that same information you go out to find out. This information we have, let us see whether it's the same or could with what they have or what has occurred in that uh, place. So if there are differential, there will little be of argument. You know, what causes argument sometimes is if the premium, uh, premium wasn't paid in full, because you can pay in part. According to, people do that at regular intervals. Say, okay, this premium I will pay quarterly. I will pay for first 100 days because no premium will cover policy. So a lot of people, because their income, their, their income is not, maybe not too regular, they say, okay, I will have if it is 100,000, I will pay 20,000 every other month. So for every other month, extend my policy. Mm -hmm. So if there, there is a default in that your policy and the claims occur, of course, the insurance will not be liable. That is the rule. Mm -hmm. But there are also many rules that can also be ap applicable. Where well, I don't want to use the word palliative. That will say, oh, that's, called, that's what they call policy of S. Grancha. To say, look, this client has been faithful, he's been paying his dues. There is a window of about 30 or um, 
30 days old, he has not renewed his policy for 30 days, but he has notified us there's a tension to do insurance. But those things are always the customer's um, uh, rules of consumer is a king or something. We always play a role. But the issue is that you must pay premium to end that policy, and that clips have to be paid mm. if policy if the premium has been paid. Okay, so despite um, this carefree attitude of people, we see insurance companies breaking up. Is there something we don't know as non-industry players about the industry? Yeah, but if you also look at it, some insurance are coming, some insurance are going. Mm -hmm. It's normal. It's not insurance is not different from normal industrial uh, uh, growing and uh, dying. Uh, though it's not the policy, but you know businesses are not properly run, they will go. People who are coming to coming to insurance are seeing windows, they are seeing opportunity, they are seeing gap. So you will not ask them not to come in. But if they are coming, what difference are they bringing? When we when we in school, those we heard about Lion of Africa, big insurance company. But where are they today? But the new ones that have come has taken over. So this life itself is a continuous process. So we're going to grow. Belt, debt is, a, is a, a continuous occurrence. So it happens in all facets, not just only in the insurance industry. Mm. So, so there's always a gap people also feel. Mm. But if you look at all insurance companies, with all due respect, that every insurance company have their strength. So innovations, policies, creation, and all those things are coming every day. This pandemic, for example, nobody expected has come. A lot of people are saying, gap, oh, this is what we didn't do right. This is what we should be doing now. This is what we do in future. So people are seeing all those things. Even as me, me as a CEO, there are things that other people are seeing that I'm not seeing. That's why we go for training, symposium, consultations, and all that. Mm. Because nobody knows it all. So what's your assessment of the sector right now? The, the assessment is that the, the industry, is, um, the awareness is being created, is growing. But we can do much more. The government needs to help in the area of legislation and make sure that the insurance industry is not overregulated. And the, the, the awareness of the populace, insurance should be a requirement for things that we need to do for our health, for our medicals, for uh, purchases, for buying properties and all those things like we are doing using the bank as BV and other. It should be made compulsory to thrive. In fact, in other parts of the world, insurance by banks. Hmm. Because they have fund, they have loose fund, they have fund that can be can, that can wait. Policyholders fund so that, what's the for case long term in this investment. Part of the world? Sorry? What's the case in this part the, of the world? The case in part of the world that banks are buying insurance. Hmm. Okay, let's go on a very <laughs> quick break, but when we come back, we'll definitely carry on this conversation. Welcome back to City 101 on Plus TV Africa. Now, um, despite um, the pandemic, the sector has been predicted by experts as um, witnessing considerable growth. Now, um, it would be weird, but I mean, it looks like the growth in the medium long term is looking good. As a major player in the industry, do you agree with these projections and what do you see happening going forward? Yeah, uh, like I said when we were in, our last, in your last question, we're talking about people coming to the industry and you're seeing the gap, right? Before now, the awareness in terms of health insurance was at the minimal level. But with the pandemic, a lot of people are now aware that look all over the world, people who lost their, 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 their families and those who are going for um, this, this, the hazards of being a health worker require insurance as a very, as a psychosant part of uh, negotiation in terms of going back to work and all that. You see the Nigerian uh, Medical Association going on strike over not uh, coverage of their health uh, uh, program. So with that, and the government immediately released nine billion for insurance premium. It's unprecedented. That's something that has not happened. If all insurance companies had one billion from that uh, Will you see that as a setback? Mm. It's not. So what am, I, what am I saying? If you look at the growth in terms of health insurance, it has increased because all industry, um, corporate bodies and all that, are not taking insurance very seriously. What is going to happen in schools? The schools will now have to look at their children. The teachers will, have to, will take insurance. So we found out that the population coming in to join the insurance um, uh, uh, policy holder will definitely increase, and that will make more, more premium for the economy. And with this pandemic, a lot of people are going to look at, oh, let's all script more policies. There are policies we never thought about before this pandemic. Those policies will come to play. Designs have been made, meetings have been had. Uh, infotech, infra infrastructural um, changes and designs are going on in terms, of, in terms of how do we take care of some of these things. Like it's even happening in the media. Mm -hmm. You know, you do interview without going to people's houses through Skype, through many things. Now it's more being encouraged. 
And if you even look at the traffic and the time you spend in the congregation, even an electionary campaign, there will be changes definitely. So if you have to sum it up, how would you rate the importance of insurance in our day-to-day -day activities as we approach um, what we now call the new normal? It has to be like over 100% if, if I have to really have sex. Mm -hmm. That is my profession. I'm biased about it if that is the case. Mm -hmm. Because we all require insurance. Insurance mm -hmm. is very important. I will give you an example. A friend of mine lost his wife, who works an oil and gas company of this, of this COVID-19 pandemic. They were crying. But a few days later, the company came with a, a check worth over 45 million. That is enough to take care of the education and uh, needs. Mm -hmm. But the tears would have been more, more terrible if such soccer did not come at all. Insurance will not make your life 100 percent better than it was, but it puts you back in the state that you were. That's the essence of indemnity. So insurance is very important. It's cycles and it's something that we show and encourage in our homes. Child education, everything. Insurance is involved. Mm. If you are the hazard of you coming to work to work here, not wearing face mask, I'm sitting there, you are sitting there, you need insurance. The generalists and everything, everybody needs insurance. Okay, it seems like um the way it is going now, COVID-19 or the pandemic is helping the business or for people to understand the importance of insurance, especially the health insurance. That's to create awareness. It help, helping to create awareness. But let's take it away from what COVID-19 is doing now yes. and um, look at it from this angle. So according to an analysis done by Daily Sun, insurance companies accounted for 31 out of 87 sanctions imposed on listed firms for various financial delinquencies in the Nigerian Stock Exchange S compliance reports. Now, this basically implies that for every 10 firms, the NSC finds about four listed in the insurance um, carrier, um, brokers and services, subsectors of financial sector services. So would you agree that insurance companies might be struggling? Uh, the, the, that's what we said. The reason why insurance companies are struggling is because of their policyholders' numbers are not increasing. Mm -hmm. If premium are not paid, the company can, insurance cannot for sure. Why is why all that like telecommunications that are functional? Because you need communication. You need to talk to people all the time. For that reason, you must have payment. If the premium, sorry, if the payment in terms of your credit on your telephone is cut off, mm -hmm. you are someone trying to talk about the needs that we have as a government regulations. That look, if you don't have insurance, you don't have to even drive a car at all. This is the minimum requirement. Even at that, people are still defaulting. But I will tell you the cars we have in Nigeria, even in Lagos, it is over 2 million. How many of those cars in this country are insured? Assuming all cars, the cars in this country are insured for 5,000 at 2 million. Do the mathematics. So it is, they are not able to meet up their obligations. Shareholders are not being paid. It's because there are no regulations to that. So insurance that are doing that are also doing, like all business, business in Nigeria, even banking, that many companies in this country are struggling. It's not just insurance. Mm. Accounting for insurance will tell you that the insurance is being seen in this country as the last sector of the subsector, which is very dangerous for our psyche, and it's not good for the economy. Insurance is supposed to wake people, dead companies up. We have what we call business interruption, group personal accident, GPA policies and all that. These are to help workers. There's public liability, product liability, business interruption policies are not be taken. So why would the company insurance do well? But I'm telling you now that the pandemic has come to create insurance. And you find that the insurance companies that are doing well, they are doing things extraordinary in terms of their own reach out at a cost. We have to be on TV every other time for avatar. People don't know that this is where we are. So if you, if you are not giving that extra buy, there's every, there is every tendency you can, can be liquidated. So there's NACOM, that's um, the National Insurance Commission. Yes. How would you say they're executing their role and how, what level of support are the insurance companies getting from NICOM? In fairness to them, the, 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 new, the new man at the hands of affair is doing his best. Um, if what we are doing now is what we've been doing before, we won't be where we are now. Mm -hmm. But I'm very sure in the, next few, in the near future, we will, we will sing a whole. Okay, so um, we've also seen foreign players coming into the industry or into the sector. Yes. What would this do going forward for the sector? They have seen the attraction in the Nigerian market. Okay. There is a gap. That is why they are coming. Mm -hmm. So how would the, um, should I call them the indigenous players, compete with them? Actually, when it looks like they, probably, they are probably coming in with more finances and stronger hold. They are coming so, with more finances, yeah, but they are so, not coming with more, more 
human resources, because more of the human resources in this country that I've never wanted to use. Mm -hmm. That is where I'm telling you that the government itself needs to do more. They have that resource in the country because their government is functional. They have seen a gap of what we're not doing well. The Nigerian industry, uh, insurance industry, I may say here, it might be laughable, but we also need palliative. Okay. We need to be encouraged by government to say, this, this time of recapitalization, SYZ, tax relief and other things should be done to encourage people because we employ people. People that are coming in from uh, Ghana, coming in from Swiss, coming in from America to establish the industry in Nigeria, they will not come with, with, they will come with less human capital. The human capital available in this country are the ones that are going to drive the market. What are they doing differently? Mm. That means we, what we don't have is infrastructure and know-how and the, and, the, and the capital, not the human capital. So the attraction is what they are doing here. So the government needs to encourage people here. Because there is a gap they are seeing that we are not seeing. Like the infrastructure in terms of um, uh, plaf creating a platform for sales of our third party. And I did, we have to rely on foreign organizations to do such things. So if government is involved in this matter, we will not do more. But just talk about government, government, so that it doesn't look like I'm blaming government too much. Mm -hmm. We ourselves as a people, as an industry player, we have also more to do. We need to collaborate more and do things and think up. Not seeing more of uh, seeing ourselves, more competition, but the growth of industry is psychosant to all of us to keep it growing. Mm. So what will be the place of um, insurance brokers? Well, insurance bro there are brokers everywhere. Mm -hmm. The word insurance broker, you know, if you take a broker and it's stop broken, you have in the capital market there are brokers. Mm -hmm. Brokers are middlemen mm -hmm. by definition. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the uh, well, the, their role is is that of a middleman, not in there. They, they relate between the insurance and, the, and their clients. Mm -hmm. How important are they for the industry? Yeah, because they have the knowledge. They are very important in the industry, that okay. I must tell you. Okay. Because they have the knowledge of the insurance. They relate with the client and the industry themselves because they are professionals in their own right. Mm -hmm. But then we've seen um, clients who would say they would rather in, um, um, speak with the company directly than the insurance brokers, maybe a case of trust. So what exactly is going on in that space? Are they really supposed to be there to stand between the clients and the insurance? The, the law favors this day. The law also favors that you can do whatever you like with yourself. Mm -hmm. You are the insured. Okay. The, the broker will always, if you, for example, if I have a case in court, I need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So the lawyer, my lawyer, is like a broker between me and the court. If I'm right, okay. you understand that is the that is the rule, that is the that is the benefit. The benefit of having a broker is the broker intercedes on your behalf. Okay. You don't have to leave what you are doing to go and talk to an insurance company. They bring that as portion of in terms of argument, complaints, and all that. Mm. So finally, before I let you go, in terms of property insurance, how how would you say people are embracing? Because this is now going away from you talking about the poor man or those that don't have a job that cannot afford insurance. For you to have a property then, would want to expect that you would keep a level of amount somewhere to at least insure that property. What is the subscription right like right now? The subscription, uh, subscription is increasing because okay. a lot of people have suffered loss in terms of flood, mm -hmm. uh, fire, special period and all that. Once you do that, inside the property, you have well called content as well. All those things have been done. But I look at it, the general, the general perception, not just the property. I think the insurance is, is coming up as it is. Mm. So if you have to advise people watching to say, I mean, to tell them what it means to have insurance, how would you break it down to them very quickly before we go? Well, uh, for if you need your life to exist when you have mishap, you need insurance. Mm. Because whether you like it or not in this world, somehow, somewhere, there are misfortune. Even when you are growing, you need insurance. If I, if I may use Dangote, for example, all his assets are insured, but he's, he's rich. He can afford to decide not to have that, but that, you don't have to start doing things you did before. But insurance brings you back in the state, the position you were before the loss. It's very important we all have insurance. Mm. That is my summation. I like how you put it, is if, you, if your life has to exist, yes. you need insurance. you need insurance. Thank you for your time, Mr. Ebosta. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for watching. To catch up on this conversation and all our exclusive content, do visit Applause TV Africa on YouTube. And of course, subscribe and follow us on all our social platforms at Applause TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Remember to follow the NCDC guidelines to fight COVID-19 and ensure you stay safe.